Well, guys, I appreciate I appreciate you guys allowing me to come out and um, share with you a little bit of uh, my story and how I uh, kind of navigated the waters as a business owner and a Christian, which isn't always easy. So, um, you know, I owned my first company when I was 25 years old, and it was a um, farmer's insurance agency that I started out in Hemet, California. And it was really my introduction into owning a business. And at 25, you can imagine, uh, that's not an easy thing, you know. Uh, first of all, I know I never had a tutor. My dad didn't own a business. He was a, in management for GTE, which became Verizon. But I never really had a tutor to teach me how to run a business. Um, during that time of owning that agency, I rededicated my life uh, at 27, so two years after I started it, <coughs> I rededicated my life to the Lord. And I really feel that that's when the blessing of my businesses really took off. And, um, and becoming a Christian owner of a business. Uh, I then moved on to working, I did that for five years, and I moved on to a couple larger regional type firms. And as a Christian being in um, being in a secular business, it's, it's difficult. Um, I remember the first place I worked at, Austin Cooper and Price, uh, I was ridiculed for my faith. Um, I was chastised for it. I was made fun of for it. And, um, but God had a plan because God allowed me to break every sales record that that place ever had. Okay? And those records stood for a very long time. Those were some of the smartest men that I had ever worked with. They really taught me about the insurance industry and what it takes to be successful. But it's funny because don't ever doubt God because in the end, those guys would come to me and go, what do you do? What do you do before you go into a deal? Are you praying? You know? And so God was at work even in the men, even the hearts of men that couldn't really figure out why this kid that didn't go to college, okay, was around people that all went to college, and it was having this tremendous success. So um, I did that for three years, and then uh, went and worked for a, 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 even a larger firm where there was actually 50 brokers, over 300 employees, and again, uh, was a Christian in a very non-Christian environment, which is difficult, guys. I understand that, you know. I get what it is. And there's a few of you here that understand that as well. Um, at that firm, though, God had his hand on me as well because after the fourth year of being there, I was the first million-dollar producer that that firm had ever had in 20 years. Nobody had ever done it. And um, I had made a bet with the CEO that if I could get to a million-dollar book, he would give me a, like a $70,000 bonus. And he laughed at me. He's like, Shh, that's easy money. No problem. Well, I did it. And they had to pay me that bonus. And there wasn't a lot of people that were happy about it. But God was in control, right? After that, I started my second business that I ever started, which was Riley Garrison and Associates. And that business really catapulted me into a whole different stratosphere of, of wealth, and of, of uh, accountability, and of management, and of uh, responsibilities. At that point, I was uh, responsible for a lot of families, like a lot of you guys are. And that's a huge responsibility as a business owner. Um, we're not just there for ourselves, okay? We're there for the people that work for us. And we have to remember that, that people look to us, and they look at what they see in us. And if they don't see what they're looking for, they're not going to stay with you guys. They're not, they wouldn't have stayed with me. Um, but that firm grew to be extremely successful. Um, I became, by the, by the end of that run, I was one of the top insurance professionals in the country and wrote some of the largest accounts in the country and in the state of California. I had also started a construction safety company uh, during that time, which is in business today, not under my leadership, but under the leadership of somebody else. And... Um, grew that business as well. At, by the end of my run, about 2010, um, I, I was overseeing probably about 60 or 70 employees in both companies. Um, in 2010, let's fast forward. So I have this huge success. 
Um, I have these companies. I have all this infrastructure around me. Um, I have uh, everything I've always dreamed of. Okay, driving a Ferrari, driving a driving a AMG 63, a two hundred thousand dollar daily driver. I you know I, I could travel wherever I wanted to go. And in 2010, I was indicted for uh, nine counts. Okay, three counts of grand theft three counts of money laundering, and three counts of commercial bribery. My world was flipped upside down. And uh, spent, was uh, indicted, was, uh, came and got, was arrested at my place of business in front of all my employees, and was uh, incarcerated for eight days before I posted bail, which was at a million dollars. 4.4, reduced to a million, got out. And uh, we'll start walking through the, the journey of, uh, of what that uh, entailed. Um, that ends up with me going through two trials, second trial. First trial, they dismissed the grand theft and the money laundering. There was no cause for it. The judge saw that, dismissed it. Should have dismissed the next three, but she didn't. Went to a different judge, second trial. Was found guilty on those three charges. Was sentenced to 32 months in state prison for that. Now remember, these charges are commercial bribery. Um, a little background on that, nobody's ever been criminally prosecuted for commercial bribery in the history of the penal code before me and my co-defendant. Um, there's a lot of politics involved in this case. There's a big political uh, uh, contributor in this. There's a lot of money changing hands. There's a lot of favor taking place. But God had a plan. Okay, and if God has a plan, I don't care how innocent you are, you're going where he wants you to go. Okay, and you guys need to remember that. Sometimes when you get in dark, deep waters, okay, in your businesses or in your life, remember, God's got a plan. There's a reason for everything. And I discovered that as I came to the end of my incarceration. Um, I pastored a church in there. I, I witnessed to men. I discovered for the first time that I enjoyed speaking, um, that maybe I had a, 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 a gifting for it. Um, so God had a plan, and God still has a plan. One of the things that I think we need to remember is that it always gets dark sometimes. But in the depths of that darkness, guys, man, that's where the Lord's at with you, right? Right? That's when it's real, real. It's not when you're driving the Ferrari, okay? It's not when everybody wants something from you. It's not when you're the guy everybody comes to when they need something. You know, that is nice, and that strokes your ego, and that makes you feel like you're worthy of something. But you know what, guys? That's also kind of a false sense of reality. It really is. And trust me, I've been there. I understand how that feels. It feels good. It feels good to be able to help people. And as business owners that are involved in this organization, what we really have businesses for as Christians is to be kingdom builders. That's really what we're here for, is to be kingdom builders. And that's really about what I'm going to talk to you guys about today, is about what it takes to be a kingdom builder and what God has to say about that. Um, just recently, uh, we've taken my case, before I jump into that, taken my case through the appeals process. The appellate court, which is three separate judges, just decided that uh, two of the charges um, are going to be thrown out, which only leaves one charge. Uh, it should have been thrown out, too, because they're identical charges. We're going to fight oral arguments for that in the next 60 days. We feel very, very confident, and our attorneys feel very confident that that last charge will be thrown out as well. I know it will. God has a plan. But, you know, I knew I was innocent going into prison, and that makes it hard. It makes it hard on my family. It makes it hard on, on a lot of people. But I also knew that God was going to meet me, and he did. He protected me so many times, okay? I was in extremely violent places with extremely violent men. And I'd never been incarcerated, never spent a night in jail, you know, didn't understand the politics, didn't understand the language, didn't understand all of it, you know, but God guided me through it. That was my desert experience, guys, and God guided me through it. And you guys are all going to have your own desert experiences in your businesses, okay? And just know that God's going to guide you guys through that, okay? 
So, if we allow the Lord to do His work, He can and will transform our business world. It will become fun, exciting, engaging, transformative. Okay? There are three pillars to a Christian business leader. And this is what they are. I think a Christian business leader needs to be obedient. Obedience is the number one thing that should identify you as a Christian business leader. It's the, it's the funnel that God blesses you through and blesses your businesses through. It really is. Okay? You need to be transparent. Okay? And this is hard. As a, as a leader and as a company owner. You need to have transparency. Because you know what transparency does? It drives people to you. They see you for who you really are. Okay? And there's, some, there's power in that, guys. There really is power in that. Okay? So be transparent. As hard as that may be, be transparent. That's the second building block. Okay? The third building block is you have to be a man of no compromise on values. Okay? A man of no compromise on values, okay? That can get tricky, especially in business. That can get tricky. So many gray areas in business, okay? And trust me, I've been in those gray areas, okay? I've been in them, and I understand what it's like. And you know you're thinking, well, this is going to help my company, no, 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 you know what I mean? But, guys, there's so much peace over here, Okay? This might get you to a temporary fix, but temporary fixes, guys, do not get you in the end zone. They do not get you there. Temporary fixes cause devastation, okay? They really do. So let me back up. So to me, obedience, what's obedience linked to? It's linked to relationship, okay? Because only relationship with your Heavenly Father creates obedience. You cannot have it any other way. You can't get it through your own self power, okay? You can't get it without anything else. So if you want to be a man of obedience, you've got to have relationship, okay? And it's got to be strong, okay? Number two, transparency, okay? Transparency equals faith. There's no way for you to be a transparent business owner without the faith to go ahead and do it, okay? Faith drags you to that transparency. It pushes you there, okay? And transparency is what's going to transform your business. The last but not least, the no compromise on values, okay? That equals courage because it takes courage to say, no, we're not going to do that. But, 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 we need to, no, no we're not going to do that. Okay? Remember, there's going to be a lot of voices around you. When you get in that spot, the devil, man, he wants to take you guys into that compromising place. He, he, everything he can do to get you in that place, he's going to try to set up the whole thing, just like a play. And he's going to walk you right into it. And the only way you're going to do what God desires for you to do is first, if you're living in that relationship, Okay? If, you're, if you're living with that faith, and last but not least, if you have the courage, the absolute courage to say, God's appointed me the CEO of this company for a reason. It's not by accident. And because of that, I've got some discernment. Because of my relationship and because of my faith that says we need to do this, even though it doesn't make sense, and you watch, it's going to make sense. It always does, guys. It always does. So that's kind of the foundation. That's our platform that we stand on as CEOs, as business owners. Okay? Okay. We need to remember one thing. As business owners, the one thing God wants more than everything else is that we turn our talents and resources into kingdom building. That's the end game. Okay? All the other success should funnel in to that one thing. Becoming a kingdom builder, okay? You guys have your businesses as Christian men for one thing. To use your resources to become kingdom builders. That's it. If you don't do that, your business is going to go away. It's going to go away. As strong as you think it is, 
it can disintegrate like that. I've seen it, okay? I've seen it happen, right? I've seen my business go away like that, okay? God had a different plan in my business. He had a different plan for me. So for that plan to take place, he had to yank me out of something that I would still be in today, making millions of dollars at, okay? But he knew for me to go up a little higher and do a little bit more, he had to take me from where I was at. Sometimes, guys, to get stronger, you got to break that muscle down, right? you got to break it down. And, man, that hurts, okay? Anything that's got value is going to take sacrifice, anything. Your businesses are valuable to the Lord, okay? What you do with your resources is important to the Lord. It's the most important thing, guys. It really is. There's nothing else that matters. You're not CEOs because you're bright, smart, and you're, you're charming. Yeah, you guys might be all of that, okay? And to be a CEO or to build a company, you have to have those characteristics. I get that. But your father sees something different in you than that. He's looking past all that. He's looking in here, guys. And if he sees what he likes, what he desires, oh, man, guys, sky's the limit. really is. And his end game is how much resource can we throw into the kingdom? How can we make each, and each individual in this room a kingdom builder, okay? A kingdom builder. God desires to give each of us amazing gifts to do what I just mentioned. There's rooms full of gifts, okay? But sometimes God desires to give gifts to his kids that he can't give. And you want to know why? So let's just, let's just imagine this room is full of boxes of gifts, okay? And you guys want to go and get the gifts because you're like a kid in Christmas. And you're like, oh, I want that one and I want that and. And God goes, oh, child, I so desire to give you that gift. But you're so in bondage. So in bondage to fear. You're so in bondage to worry. You're so in bondage to isolation. You're so in bondage to lack of fulfillment. Lack of contentment. So many things keeps us from God's best. Right? So God's saying, I have all these gifts I want to give to you guys. But there's a blockage. I can't give them to you because you're always stressed out. You're always worried. You're not living in faith. Okay? You're not living in that courage that I've given you. That you were born with. You're so consumed with what might happen. Don't be consumed with what might happen. Live in the moments of your lives, guys. Life's going to go by very quickly. And if you don't live in those moments, you're not going to be transformative. You know what changes lives? Transformation. You know where transformation comes? From relationship. Right? That's where it comes from. And if you're worried, and if you're stressed out, and you have anxiety and you have health problems because of all those things, God can't use you to your full capacity. And he so desires to do that. I know. I've been there in my controller's office, on my knees going, I can't do this anymore. God's not with me. I'm so worried. And God's just looking at me going, Oh, Jim, I'm right here, man. Just shove all that stuff off the table. And look, your eyes will be open and I'll be right in front of you. But I've got blinders on because all I see is worry, anxiety, bills not getting paid. How am I going to take care of my family? How am I going to take care of my employees? What's my reputation going to be like? Oh, guys, and God's saying, Jim, that doesn't matter because I'm your daddy. And I'm the strongest person in the world. 
I created it. And I can take you where nobody else can take you. And I can take each and end of each one of you where you've never been before. That's what God's saying to you guys today. So, the Lord desires to give us his wonderful gifts that make us more useful, more productive, more successful. Like, these are the good gifts that we get when we live in that freedom. Creativity, wisdom, focus, enthusiasm, energy. Okay? You guys want to be kingdom builders? You need this gasoline. This is the fuel that makes you kingdom builders. You cannot be a kingdom builder without being creative. You cannot be a kingdom builder without wisdom, focus, enthusiasm, energy. There is no way you're like trying to hit home runs with a bat. Like the, you guys were talking about baseball. The little bats they give you as little trinkets. You're like standing up to a plate. And Randy Johnson's pitching to you. And you have this little bat. <laughs> you can't hit that ball. There's no way. And God's saying, I'll give you the bat to hit the home runs. All right? I'll, I'll give you the eye. I'll give you the wrist speed. Right? I'll give you those things you need to do. Every time Randy hit, pitches to that ball, you're going to hit it over the fence. He's going to give us that stuff. We have to believe it, though, guys. Don't let the enemy tell you that you're not good enough to receive those gifts. It's a lie from the pit of hell. It is. Do not believe it. If you're surrounding yourselves with people that aren't pushing you in the right direction, then get rid of them. Okay? A wise man told me, we never had issues with anybody we let go. We only have issues with those that we keep. That was wisdom, man. Absolute wisdom. And I can tell you from experience, it's the ones that I kept that destroyed me. Nobody in your organization is too important to fire. Remember that. It's power. It's power. When you start making somebody an idol in your organization, you're done. You're done. Okay, it's over. I've done it. I've done it, guys. I'm talking from experience. Nobody in your organization is too valuable to fire. Nobody. Right? And as God's your boss, that includes you guys. Think about that. You have a boss over you. You have a CEO over you. His name is Jesus Christ. Okay? And if he doesn't think that you're up to the task, if you're not going in the right direction, he will put you on the bench for a while. Okay? Until you're ready to go back in the game. Remember that, okay? Remember that. Okay. Um, before, when I got asked to speak, I have this special place I go to. It's on a mountaintop. It's very difficult to get to. I found it a couple years ago before I was incarcerated. I spent two years on that mountaintop before I was incarcerated. I go up there. I spend time with the Lord. I hear his voice. Some amazing things have happened up there. Um, I've read I've, I've I've uh, put a cross up there um, that's uh, surrounded by this stone kind of little monument thing. A lot of people start now go up there. But when I found out I was going to um, speak, that's the first place I went because that's where my daddy's at, right? That's where my dad's at. So I go up there, and this is kind of some of the stuff that started coming out of me, okay? And it's for you guys, so... You know, before I do this, I want to pray, because this is important stuff right here, all right? Heavenly Father, uh, as I come um, to these men, I'm sorry I didn't come to you already earlier, but I want this to be powerful. I want this to pierce hearts. I want this to transform lives. This is not, these are not my words, Lord. These are not my thoughts. These are straight from the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that it would change and courage and push these men to where they need to be for your glory, for your benefit, for your kingdom building. Amen. Okay, so I'm on the mountain, and I'm praying. And um, I have these thoughts, so let me share them with you. Everything has, a, everything has a beginning. Everything has a middle. 
and everything has an end. First you're born, then you live, and then you die. Okay? The middle determines what you're going to be doing after the end. Think about that. The middle determines what you're going to be doing after the end. Whoo! That's heavy duty right there. That's heavy duty. We need to remember that. What we're doing right now, the middle, determines what we're going to be doing after we die. Okay? Because some, everybody dies. Everybody's born, everybody dies. As believers in Christ, we know there's a life after this. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Okay? But we're going to spend eternity doing stuff. We're not going to be sitting on clouds, floating around, playing harps. Okay? Sorry to break your bubble. That's not going to happen. That would have drove me nuts anyways. I would have just gone crazy. I need to be doing stuff. You know? So <laughs> we're not going to be doing that. There's going to be things, cities, exciting stuff going on. Trust me. I want to be in the mix of that, okay? So what we do right now determines how in the mix we really are, okay? Okay? So remember that. The middle determines what you do after the end, okay? Goals. I'm big into goals, and you guys should be too. I write my goals down. I set them all the time. I read them all the time. Goals are big. Goals need to start like this, okay? There's three steps to goals. Number one, faith needs to be your first structure of any goals you do. Your family needs to be second. And oh yeah, last but not least, your business. That's right. Last but not least, your business. It's not vice versa. And some of us get it mixed up. Business becomes number one. Family becomes number two. And oh, by the way, faith. Yeah, we'll throw that in there, last but not least. That's how you guys and myself get in very serious, depressing, depressing situations, is when we flip-flop the order, okay? As a leader who conquers new territory, I'm speaking to you guys. In our businesses, we need to have a few characteristics. These are the characteristics of warriors right here, and we're all warriors, okay? You need to be brave, Absolutely. You cannot start a business and lead a business without being brave. You need to be unashamed of your faith in that business. And man, I can tell you, that's not easy. That's not easy. When I was driving home after that first large organization I worked at and guys were calling me because I wouldn't go to strip bars with them and I wouldn't go, you know, watch porn and all that stuff because I wouldn't do that, I was a leper, okay? And that, you need to be brave to get through that. So you need to be unashamed about your, about your faith. You need to be approachable, guys, and I struggle with this. You need to be approachable, man. You need to be, sometimes we just need to like throw our arms out like this and go, I'm a hugger, come give me a hug, I'm here, all right? I'm not all locked down, all right? Come here, come give me something, because we get locked down. We start to believe our own press, okay? We start to believe our own success. Whew, that's dangerous, okay? Right? It's the humble that lead the Israelites into the promised land. Moses led him out of Egypt. What was it said about Moses? The humblest man that ever lived. That man led three million Jews out of Egypt ripped him right out of the hand of Pharaoh, okay? Then Joshua, another humble man, one of only two guys that came back and said, we can take them, we can take them. He was given the right to take the Israelites into, into Israel, the promised land, okay? So we need to be approachable. Both those men were approachable, okay? We need to be sincere. Whew. Yeah. This takes, this takes work. Because when somebody's talking to you and you're looking through them, okay, trust me, I'm the worst at this, and you're looking through them, okay, that's not being sincere. They pick up on that. They know it, okay? They know it. 
If you guys want to be kingdom builders, if you want to be transformative, if you want to do what your dad wants you to do, you've got to be sincere about it, okay? You've got to be sincere with your employees. They've got to know you care. What, what makes relationship good? What makes relationship rich? The sincerity of the people involved in that relationship. You're not going to want relationship, and nobody's going to want relationship with you if they don't see sincerity in you. It's just not going to happen. You guys want to grow your businesses. I want you to grow your businesses. I'm growing businesses, worldwide businesses. Okay, And the only way you're going to get somebody to follow you is if you're a sincere person. Okay, You know what? You know what designates a leader? You look behind you. If there's somebody following you, then you probably got a chance. All right? But if there's nobody behind you, you probably got some work to do. All right? And that's going to start with sincerity. People will get behind a leader with, with these qualities, and your businesses will grow even greater. Okay? They will. There's guys in this room, okay? Some of us have more resources than others, all right? But there's guys in this room that are sitting on gold mines that need to be mined, okay? There's guys in this room that are sitting on gold mines, and God's saying, there's the axe, there's the pick, there's the shovel. Go get it. You're sitting on gold, my son, and you don't even know it. Dig it up. Dig deep into it. Use it. Don't think we've got it all figured out. We can always go deeper. We need to go deeper, guys. If you want to be a leader in your industry, you got to do things others aren't willing to do. You got to be a little bit crazy. You got to have courage. You got to think out of the box. You got to dig into that gold mine, right? You know what that gold mine is? It's your relationship with your father. Man, that's where the gold's at. The gold's at that, and, and the gold's in that relationship with your father. That's where it's at, man. So dig into that mind. Okay. These are words from our father from the mountaintop that he wanted me to share with you guys. He wants you guys to hear this, okay? That I am for them, not against them, no matter the situation or circumstance. That they're deeply loved and cared for. Mm. That I want them to win and be successful. Guys, you got to know that. This is your dad talking to you right now. He wants you to win. He wants you to be successful. That I want to bless their families. Oh, yes. That he wants to bless your families. You guys cannot be successful at what you do during the day if you go home at night and your house is a train wreck. You can't do it. You can't do it. You got to fix that first. That's got to be fixed first. If you, you, you know what they do with SEALs before they go on a mission? They gather them around, the leader, okay? Typically a major. I think at that level it's a major. And they ask each individual SEAL, is there anything in your life right now that needs to be fixed? And they need to answer. And he says, you got a bill you need to pay. You have problems with your spouse. You got problems with a kid. You have a problem. Any, in any area of your life right now. And they need to answer no. If they answer yes, it needs to be fixed before they go out. You want to know why? He tells them why. Because if you're in the field and you're distracted for one split second about something else, you put us all our lives in danger. Okay? So when you guys or going home, or your houses aren't in order, and you're going into your places of business, you're putting all those people that are relying on you in danger. So fix that first. 
and watch your businesses skyrocket, guys. Skyrocket. But most of all, the Lord says, I want their time. I want to sit with them to fellowship. I desire for my sons to be in a place to hear my voice, not all the other voices of this world. Mm. I understand being busy. I created the world, and, and I created you, but I also rested from my work on the seventh day. I desire my sons to rest so they can achieve what I have set before them. Mm. Let that sink in, guys. But most of all, I desire their time, which to me equals their love. You spend time with those or the things you love. So this is my desire. Guys, your dad in heaven, who gives you everything, desires one thing from you. He desires your time. Okay? And that time that you spend with the Lord is what's going to push you into the upper stratosphere of success in your business. Okay? That time is what is going to give you the tools and talents and the abilities that you need. Okay? You can't be successful if your tank's always on empty. Your tank needs to be full all the time. And the only way it's going to get full, guys, is by spending time with the source. And that source is Jesus Christ. And that source is those quiet places. I, I challenge you, all of you, to find a special place. I, it doesn't have to be on a mountaintop like I go to. It could be a prayer closet. It could be a room like this back here. It could be a place. But spend that time. And I'm going to tell you right now, five minutes, ten minutes, that ain't going to do it. That's a cheap imitation, guys. That's what the devil himself wants you to do. He wants you to spend ten minutes. He wants you to get your little kick start. Because then he can take you down. So easy. But if you put that time in, if you invest that time... God's going to redeem it. And those roots are going to be so deep, you're going to be like a mighty oak tree that no matter what comes at it is never going to be ripped down. But that only comes with time. You can't make a team. You can't have a good marriage. You can't be a good father without time being invested into each of those parts of your life. But you know what the source of all that fruit comes from? The time with your father. That's where it comes from, guys. Matthew 6, 33 and 34 say, say, says this. It says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Mmm. How many times do we worry about next week? And I'm, I'm a great offender. I'm not standing here telling you that you should be doing something I haven't done a million times and still struggle with. But what I've learned from being in prison, guys, because when you're in prison, you know what? You have no control. It's a great learning place for CEOs. Trust me. I, I know that sounds crazy, but it is. Because for the very first time in your life, you don't have any control over what's going on. And what happens when you don't have to have any control? You have to trust. You have to trust. Okay? You have to trust. Oh, trust as a leader is so hard because we believe so much in our own ability. Right? So to trust somebody else to get something done, especially when those that we've asked to do things don't get them done the way that we think they need to be done. Trust, guys. Okay? Mm. My gifts are not always what you can see, feel, or touch. The greatest gifts 
are those of my spirit, starting with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Remember, relationship produces results, okay? A loving leader, a gentle leader, okay? A joyful leader, that attracts people, right? That's what I want to get behind. The greatest men in my life have had that ability to inspire me, okay? To believe in me. People want to be believed in. We want to be believed in. The only way that happens is through the fruit of the Spirit. These fruits. That's where you have that, transfor that transformation. Okay, guys? We want our businesses to grow. Why? Because our number one goal is to be kingdom builders. That's it. That's the only reason we're here today, is to become kingdom builders. There's no other reason. As, as even if we weren't business owners, as Christians, that should be our desire for every Christian, is to be a kingdom builder. Because that's what's important to our Father in heaven. Okay? The Lord redeems the time spent with him. It's never wasted. The Lord redeems the time that's spent with him. It's never wasted. Guys, that hour you're spending... Try to do this. Leave your phone. Don't have your phone in the room. Don't have your phone where you're at. Because I can tell you right now, the devil's going to use it against you. All you got to do is feel the vibrate. And you're distracted. All you got to do is feel the vibration. And you're totally in a different place. He's drug you away from the, from the real gems that are willing to be mined up. You know when those gems come? After you've been there a while in silence. They don't come in five minutes. They don't come in ten. They come after you've been there for a while. And you finally <sighs> take a deep breath. And you take that table. This is a visual I do. You take the table that's got all that stuff on it. And you wipe it clean. And there's an empty white table in front of you. And God starts to put the things that he desires for you to focus on. On that table. And guys, they're not going to be the things of business. Okay? They're not. They're not going to be those things. They're going to be things that revolve around relationships. Things that revolve around ministries. Things that revolve around transformation of people and of lives. Things that might take some sweat. Right? You know? Before I was incarcerated, I had went to uh, Haiti ten times. And I'd, we were building churches in the bush. The reason the, the judge, who was the only African-American judge in the Riverside Court, the only reason he reduced my bail from $4.5 million to a million is because of those 10 times in Haiti. That he said it from the stand. So God had a plan, right? And a man, and I believe he's a Christian, I could just feel his, you know, goes, there's something about that guy. Guys that he's, what he's being accused of, guys like that don't go to Haiti 10 times. And he said before the earthquake, this is before they had the big earthquake, and he said that. Before the earthquake, this guy went 10 times. I'm reducing his bail. So I thank God for that. So guys, go and turn the world upside down and be known not as business owners, but as kingdom builders. The one thing that you want to be said of you, okay, is it not that you made millions of millions of dollars or that you were had all these great uh, organizations around you, okay? Or this great infrastructure around you. The one thing that you want to be said about you, that guy's a kingdom builder. That guy's after doing what his dad wants him to do. He's after his dad's business, okay? And our dad's business is taking the word and transforming lies for the, for the kingdom of God, for Jesus Christ, for showing people what the Spirit really is like, okay? They're looking to us for it, guys. The people that work for you, they're looking to you. And if they don't see it in you, 
they're going to go find it somewhere else. Right? That's not to say everybody that works for you is a Christian. But even if they're not a Christian, maybe they desire to be a Christian. And if they see something in you that they desire, that's going to pull them further into that relationship. Right? So let's change our businesses by becoming kingdom builders. But hear this, and this is what I'm going to close with. More than anything else, God is more concerned about that time. He desires that time more than anything else that you do. Right? That's the gas that gets you there. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.